So welcome everybody. So today, right. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna present the reasoning with contextual ontologies and influence diagrams, a recent CARE paper. Uh, this is a joint work with Rafael Peñolosa. Thanks for coming to this session. So um, consider a fictitious infectious disease idealium, which is probably asymptomatic that you might know, you might not know that it's, uh, you, you might have it just like COVID nowadays, it's not a nice example. Well, there can be two tests, test A and test B for detecting whether an individual is infected or not. And test A might be cheap but reliable. On the other hand, test B uh, can be reliable but expensive. So what would you do? What would you take? Which test would you take? And of course, in a decision scenario, the costs for such situation would be mostly about false results, right? I mean, it can be false positive or false negative that you don't want. It might uh, lower your life quality. You might think that, hey, you are sick, but you are not, or it might uh, cause to, to further uh, spread of the disease. So um, such scenarios are nicely, uh, can be nicely modeled in influence diagrams, uh, a, a convenient probabilistic graphical model decision theory tool Yet, of course, these uh, classical uh, KR representations, the graphical KR representations, uh, lack uh, of uh, strength of logic based representation and reasoning services. For instance, we might be interested in inserting, asserting some sort of um, axiom saying that, hey, idealium causes a green coloration of the bonds but only if the subject's infected. So, and this, this uh, particular, particular axiom, we might desire to hold in some particular context. So on the other hand, we, we have uh, description logics, we, which were not uh, originally designed to deal with uncertainty. As a, as a result, there was a motivation to come up with a lot of brilliant works that you see here uh, to model or integrate uh, uncertain representations to it. And, uh, but these are, of course, I mean, from the lenses of a decision theoretic situation, these are very passive attitudes towards knowledge, of course. The agents cannot uh, choose between different uh, knowledge to, to decide, to make a contextual decision. And in this work, uh, in order to fulfill this gap, we focus on one particular probabilistic uh, description logics from Jalen and Peñolaza from 2017, and we extend it with the um, light um, description logic EL. So some very brief um, introduction uh, or, or background to the influence diagrams is that it, it's just, maybe I'm sure some of you already know what a Bayesian network is. So just simple, simple extension of this is that you have additional two type of nodes. One is uh, called a decision node and the other is called a, a, a cost node. Cost node is just mo models different outcomes and um, so how this just uh, implement some sort of function that represents how desirable some particular outcomes and the decision node is some sort of, you can think of it like a random variable decided by the agent, okay? So, um, the, the scenario that I mentioned, right, uh, can be, I mean, this is one of the ways that uh, to, to uh, model this scenario, D for disease, S for symptoms, and P for positive diagnosis, and the links, uh, some, I mean, direct and indirect links, and sometimes missing the link also tells you about how you see the problem, and so on and so forth. And in general, an influence diagram can be seen as an incomplete Bayesian network, that is, a conditional probability table is missing. Here is the uh, TA node. You will see the um, uh, quadrat one, and uh, which is to be decided. And once once it is instantiated, it will just boil down to a Bayesian network. Then you can just you do your uh, magical whatever inference uh, rule out there. In in case of uh, in case of the Bayesian network is a is a chain standard chain rule, which gives you some. A factorized for, for form of a, a joint probability, which simplifies uh, the d distributions or regularizes in some certain way. And a local strategy then would be to instantiate some particular node with some conditional probability, whereas a global strategy 
then would be instantiating all the decision variables and and then uh, we would call if these uh, random variables you can think of them like as uh, propositional variables right um, uh, if, if, if it would it would be pure if it's uh, just between zero and one and if not we would call it a mixed strategy or or um, arbitrary uh, strategy and then expected cost would be just determined by the weighted sum of this distribution assigning to each outcome the particular probability and so on so um, one one such right one such uh, very naive pure strategy would be I mean, which might come to your mind, hey, if I show the symptoms, sorry, if I don't show the symptoms, maybe I take the unreliable and the more cheap one, whereas if, if I show some symptoms, I might take the um, more reliable and but expensive one. And, and the uh, expected co cost calculation, these are all in, uh, examples from the paper. You can go and check around and um, right, convince yourself or just like standard uh, uh, monograph. Um, so since we are in the description logic um, session, I will talk a little bit about uh, our language, uh, syntax and semantics. So we call this language as IDLE and it stands for influence diagrams with contextual EL ontologies. And so in addition, so, so the basic syntactic uh, addition to the classical EL syntax is that uh, we are annotating all these axioms with some particular uh, propositional formula, phi, okay? So, and then just following the classical description logics, uh, understanding of the syntax, um, right? A T-box then would be a finite set of these kind of statements and so on and so forth. And, and a knowledge base would be a, a one that is coupled with, with an influence diagram since we want to in, in, integrate them. And then um, the, on the semantic side, the only, only extension we do is some sort of variable assignments, right? In addition to the classical uh, domain uh, set and the interpretation function, it, it just, it's just this particular, um, so every interpretation then would have some particular uh, assignment to the propositional variables and, and then the, uh, what would follow is that whenever this assignment satisfies the attached or associated propositional formula, then we would expect th uh, that the classical description logic semantics to uh, take over, right? So, uh, and you can think of this uh, for particular um, different instantiations as uh, possible world semantics, right? So, um, then this would, right, this would naturally give hands to, to defining the pro pro uh, probabilistic uh, interpretations that uh, to every such possible world, it would also assign some sort of particular uh, probability value. And in addition, um, since we are allowing agents to choose a strategy, which is a probability distribution, in order to, in order to talk about satisfaction of such a framework, we have to talk, think about, I mean, we have to think about how to make it, right? And the one obvious way is to making this probabilistic interpretations consistent with the strategy. So as a general remark, if you just look at the very bottom, it, it just says, hey, uh, the, uh, the probabilistic interpretation has to be consistent with the strategy to be a model. Therefore, it is rather determined by the uh, strategy. Uh, Right, to, to, to think about uh, the models of the whole uh, knowledge base. So this is, this particular example actually serves as a, I mean, it tells you how, how the whole framework just works. On the right hand side, you see the uh, eight classical uh, description logic worlds, right? These are all possible worlds and each of them are labeled perhaps by the random variables uh, determined values plus the uh, random variable that is decided by the agent. And on the left hand side, you see, for instance, uh, if you look at the most bottom axiom, right? I mean, some individual or sub subject is safe. If, an, I mean, this is the case when you don't have any positive uh, symptom uh, and, sorry, you don't have any symptom and you don't have positive diagnosis. And the uh, probabilistic part, of the interpretation 
uh, here is just giving you some idea about this uh, sort of assignments to each uh, particular possible world. And well, you can just go and check around that the previous strategy that we, uh, that we talked about uh, before, as is actually uh, the, the, this, this probability distribution here is consistent with S uh, for, for K. So talking a little bit about um, reasoning services, what, what kind of reasoning services we have in this logic. Um, so, okay, of course, when we're talking about costs in, in, in a very classical decision theoretic uh, framework, we always think about minimizing the expected cost or what would be the, uh, what would be the one that maximizes uh, it and so on. And in order to talk about the complexity of these things, we look at their um, decision theoretic uh, problems, right? So, um, so th they always comes with this duality in the paper, like something, uh, right? Optimizing or thinking decimal, what would be the max, and so on and so forth. So the opt would then be decide whether there is a strategy S such that the expected cost of uh, strategy S with respect to the influence diagram is lower or not than a given uh, real. Okay, and and uh, if you check uh, the paper, you will see some results that it turns out these problems are um, piece space complete and we further, I mean, the, 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 all the other reasoning problems are actually can be thought of a um, more uh, more of a blocks that uses this block that I, I introduced you before. It's just used as a building block. And one generalization of this is that so um, um, observation. But let's, I mean, so let's say you observed C subsumes. So subsumes you you should there. come to an end soon. Okay, I'm almost there. Um, yeah, maybe my timing is wrong. It just still says three minutes, but I will just make one minute if it's okay. So oh, you, you want some questions, right? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, I'm, I'm, uh, I will fly, Franz. Thanks, <laughs> thanks. I'm almost finishing. So, so in addition to the classical influence diagram settings or uh, graphical model setting, you would have, um, uh, we, we have some additional. Uh, some some relief, uh, sorry, sorry, releasing this restriction that uh, observation can come from outside world. Okay, and then we we talk about the um, we talk about the cost of these um, uh, pr problems. Yeah, uh, given the conditions, and and um, so and then and then you can look for strategies that uh, dominates any other strategy. Uh, either optimistically or pessimistically. And for the arbitrary case, uh, I'm just in the last slide. So it, just for the arbitrary case, we, we borrow an idea from uh, game theory uh, using sequential forms and transform this influence diagram, uh, capturing the behavior faithfully to a game tree. And two, number two, that would be the player, the nature, the Bayesian uh, nodes, and the one would be the decision making agent and corresponding LP, is linear, of course, in the size of the game tree, but the game tree is exponential in the size of the influence diagram. The hardness would still stay there. And to brief up, we introduced the new uh, description logics, uh, bringing uh, the uh, decision making under uncertainty. It just extends BEL from the past, and we studied some of its uh, reasoning. Uh, problems, include some of his reasoning problems and uh, studied its complexity. For future work, we are thinking about looking for approximating these strategies and uh, also um, maybe a parameterized complexity would be in place. And that could, that could be also interesting to look at some um, cost functions, uh, realistic cost functions that takes the, for instance, minimality of the uh, ontology into account. Thank you very much. <laughs>